Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the opportunity to step away and pause for a minute, check your notes, uh, get things together. Let's resume here with the second uh, mini lecture part here, which is actually going to be chapter nine in your textbook. I uh, wanted to piggyback off of the mus musculoskeletal system and add the nervous system with it. And that's what we'll focus on here in this second part mini lecture. So let's look at neuron function. I mentioned in the unit two lecture a little bit about what those things do and how they may work. And again, we've got a, a photo image up here at the right, which is actual uh, neurons moving through the nervous system. Very specialized cells that lie within the neuro nervous system are the neurons. They divide into three classifications. Kind of mentioned those uh, in the last unit, but let's review them. Sensory neurons, interneurons, and motor neurons. So well, when we look at neuron function, there are a lot of myelin, myelinated nerves. Very difficult to say, obviously. Uh, so they have a myelin sheath, and this is what transports that signal uh, really quickly. There are obviously some non-myelinated -myelin, nerves, uh, but whenever we have that myelin sheath there, obviously that nervous, uh, that neuron can be transferred very, very quickly. So up to about 50 times faster, actually. There's then what we call what we, a reflex arc and kind of the simplest form of function within the nervous system. So it begins with the stimulus and results in some kind of action. So, you know, your hand touches a hot plate uh, will trigger some kind of action. So interneurons are stimulated and then stimulates another interneuron. And oftentimes that is, like I said, in my example, tied to some kind of motor neuron. Um, sometimes that's tied to stimulating some kind of muscle movement. So it kind of depends upon what is going on uh, in those particular functions. So when we look at, again, driving into a little bit more detail on neuron function, uh, there's a lot of different reflexes that can happen based upon these nervous system reactions. A withdrawal reflex, a somatic reflex, a cross extensor reflex, which is helping you to maintain balance, a stretching reflex, or an autonomic reflex, which is controlling smooth and cardiac muscle and also endocrine function. So you may be stimulated, uh, something may stimulate that, like an injury of some kind. All right, so let's talk about brain and a little bit of its structure and function. So we have the peripheral nervous system. We're kind of breaking out uh, what we oftentimes you know, meld into one thing and just call it the nervous system. We're going to break it out and talk about the peripheral nervous system, which is all your extremities, which oftentimes are detecting stimuli and then informing the central nervous system of different through afferent nerves of what, what they are sensing or what they are experiencing and what to do next. Then, of course, we have the central nervous system that receives all of those signals. And that's obviously comprised of the spinal cord and the brain. And it's bathed very, very uh, delicately in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, if you see it uh, through the rest of this uh, mini lecture. So major structures of the brain, and again, we're fortunate to have a, an image here on the right to kind of help us. Uh, we've got the cerebrum here on the bottom, the cerebellum uh, here at the top uh, right hand, the brain stem that's coming down. So this would be in the back, this would be in the front. Um, so the thalamus and the hypothalamus, these two structures that are buried within the, the brain uh, are very, very important for hormone reception or production. And so we're receiving stimulus oftentimes uh, in the thalamus and hypothalamus, which then in turn creates the body, uh, triggers the body to do something different as a response to that stimulus. So the spinal cord, again, is the the link between the peripheral nervous system and the brain. Very, very important that we obviously uh, keep that thing in, in very good shape. And it attaches at each vertebral, verte, uh, vertebral segment. So there's two nerve branches that exit the spinal cord out into your extremities. There's a lot of different methods for testing whenever you have an animal that may have spinal cord damage. You can test reflexes, you can do a mile, uh, myelogram uh, or an MRI. Uh, to test for uh, nervous system damage. So 
two branches of the autonomic nervous system. So the sensory somatic system. So we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Uh, again, very uh, nice to have an image here uh, from the textbook and they're all labeled here for you. Uh, from the olfactory nerve, which is your sense of smell, to your optic nerve, which is your vision, and so forth and so on, down on all the way down to the uh, 12th one down here. So the nerves enter the brain directly and really do not go to the spinal uh, column. So there's a lot of, several are sensory only and have no motor function uh, at all. Okay, so we dive in then to two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Um, kind of a parasympathetic pathway. The sympathetic system stimulates organs in preparation for fight or flight. So, uh, for example, whenever you're trying to corner a cow, say to catch her and put a halter on her, uh, that sometimes will trigger the fight or flight response if they're not particularly tame. Uh, so then that stimulates those organs to prepare for that very experience where they may need to be looking for a different place to move. Uh, the parasympathetic system slows the heart rate and helps lower the blood pressure. So for some of you that maybe experience stress on occasion, this parasympathetic nervous system is your body's response to try and calm you down, uh, to try and lower that blood pressure so that it just doesn't continue to go up and up and up and you get more and more and more excited. That's the body's response to help try and keep you calm under pressure. Same thing in animals. Uh, when that fight or flight response kicks in, this parasympathetic system will help try and regulate that fight or flight response. So we look at the branches of this particular system. Uh, we have heat receptors, mechanical receptors, uh, all the way down to chemoreceptors, uh, eye reception and so on and so forth. And again, a, a good cutaway, we saw this image a little bit earlier where we have a free nerve uh, that's sitting right in here. And then we have a deep pressure to the touch, a corpuscle that's down here that would be sensitive uh, if it got touched that deep into the tissue there. Well, then of course, send a signal that we've got potentially some kind of damage or injury going on or maybe a need to retract and, and get ready to move. Clinical practice then, again, we've had these a uh, few slides through the section here, just to kind of remind us of different things that you'll see. When you have a thorough physical examination can kind of reveal potential neurological problems, uh, whether it may be cranial or spinal type nerves. Generally, uh, we'll do observations and look at mental status, alertness or depression, uh, and I'll call your attention to the bottom one specifically because at the back end of the course, when we get into specific species diseases, really just observing the animal for alertness or depression will tell you a little bit about uh, what potential disease that may be affecting them. And you'll see depression is a symptom of a lot of different uh, diseases. Of course, we can look at specific reflexes can also be evaluated. You've got an image here of, of, a, of a reflex test on a dog uh, to kind of see if their uh, leg is functioning properly, that knee jerk reflex. And then local anesthetics, of course, whenever surgery is required uh, or the need for treatment can help a little bit block that nervous system flow so that the, the patient doesn't feel any pain during that period of time. Um, helps you sometimes with diagnostics if you need to go in and do some uh, some testing in order to get a, a muscle or a limb to sit and stand still and not be not respond to that stimulus of you touching them or manipulating it uh, you can anesthetize it uh, in order to examine it more carefully seizures of, uh, of course then is kind of when the nervous system begins to misfire or excessive firing of neurons so it can cause trauma tumors toxins uh, a lot of these a lot of these things can set off uh, seizures uh, even certain infectious diseases that we may see later on insecticides of course uh, sometimes can cause when we have poisoning incidences that's why this slide is thrown in there is that sometimes can block cholinesterases which help trigger some of these neurons to fire um, occasionally you'll see muscle twitching and te uh, tenseness or stiffness uh, maybe even something like drooling, seizures again can come into play. So again, just reminds you that insecticides can have some nervous system 
effect uh, should an animal become um, exposed to them. So be careful with how you store and utilize them. Of course, organisms like Listeria, uh, the, the, the uh, pathogen that causes Listeria that we will talk about later on, or equine protozoa, myeloencephalitis, uh, causes ataxia, muscle atrophy. Uh, you have a picture of a downer cow here on the, on the right side that's uh, suffering from Listeria or circling disease. And clearly you can see uh, she looks rather depressed. Uh, has all kinds of challenges going on. You got a droopy, uh, drooping ears and eyelids and probably a lack of coordination if she were moving. Um, things that you would be detecting if you were trying to diagnose disease. Of course, then you have other organisms like botulism that can uh, kind of tox uh, toxin that is ingested that affects the central nervous system. Very, very uh, infectious. Um, it's a clostridium type pathogen. So as we wrap unit three up, let's hit our summary page again. So again, very important to understand that the skeletal system aids in proper treatment of disease and injury, understanding how that system is put together and how it functions. The brain and spinal column make up the central nervous system, and then the limbs compose the peripheral nervous system. The, cent the central nervous system is divided into sensory somatic and autonomous nervous systems, you know, things that work based on stimulus or things that work automatically. And all animals are susceptible to some kind of neurological disorder. So it's under, important to understand different things that can happen so that we may troubleshoot, prevent, and diagnose disease appropriately. Thanks for tuning into this section. We'll look forward to interacting with you uh, in this module in Canvas.